Attention please. This uploading is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles G. Pitchell. Follow us. At the Gibbon House, where keepers suspect Golden Cheeks Kim is about to give birth, the young primate is still looking uncomfortable. It's been several hours now and there's been no change in her condition. We're starting to be really quite concerned now. Um, the labour that she's going through doesn't seem to be pro progressing at all. Um, there is no sign of um, that baby coming out naturally and have actually called out the vet as well and we're just waiting on him. We're also noticing that Tien's just kind of hanging back out of the way. Normally he's very attentive and giving her lots of hugs, but he's just keeping out of her way right now and, and letting her get on with things. Most primates at the park give birth on their own. Bringing in the vet signals real concern amongst the care team. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> vet Thesar thinks they've made the right decision. OK, but she's been actively Australian since the morning, since early morning. Since so, 9 o'clock, yeah. So we are, we are already, already the process has started. I think it'll be, it'll be silly not to, not to do something about it now. Mm -hmm. And that means Kim will need to be sedated so she can be taken to the park's hospital for days out to examine her. OK, let's go. Kim is removed from her enclosure in a travel crate. It's okay, Kim. If Kim is in labour, she may need a caesarean. Okay. And there's only ever been two of those in the history of the park. It's a big worry. The whole team are here to help, and Alison has been called in too. Concerned staff gather round. Kim is given an anaesthetic so the vet can perform an ultrasound to check that there is a baby. It's moving. Mm. Whether that's her moving it or it's moving, it's moving. The scan shows a definite heartbeat, but there could be a problem. It's too slow. It should be faster than that. It's got a massive head. Look at that head. Fazar's going to have to perform an emergency caesarean to get this baby out in time. I think now time to go to against us a bit. He makes an incision. Is it going to be big enough? No. No. <laughs> it's huge. As the baby appears, there may be a clue why Kim was so uncomfortable. Her waters haven't broken, even though she's been having contractions for hours. Okay, Look at the head. That's, that's it. Perfect. The baby is removed. But there is something wrong. The baby should be breathing on its own by now. This little one looks like it needs help. The umbilical cord is severed as another staff member waits poised with a towel. Just to shame that for myself. OK, all yours. So if he goes with a with clamp, this, with you can yeah. get rid of the clamp whenever you want. The first job is clearing the airway. Alison wraps the baby in a towel and rubs it. And rubbing should stimulate the lungs. But Alison's worried. I'm not convinced that we're doing a whole lot here, Thesor. For the next 20 minutes, Alison uses all her experience to try and get the baby Gibbon to breathe. Come on, gag, gasp, do anything. Yeah, but it's gasp. not looking good. I'm not seeing any breaths, I'm not <clears throat> feeling any breaths. There's certainly no gasping. Nothing is working. I think we've lost him. Anybody disagree? Uh. Alison and the other staff peer sadly at the lifeless baby. All the team can do now is concentrate on Mum Kim and hope they can successfully bring her round from the anaesthetic. Kim lies unconscious on the operating table. An aerial view of the woolly monkey enclosure. At Lavar's woolly monkey enclosure, there are hard to get treats on offer. Pine cones packed with raisins, nuts and seeds. Staff scatter them in various locations. Pine trees grow in the enclosure, so the woolies are used to pulling apart these cones to look for insects and nuts. 
Laval's group are really good with enrichment, um, anything that's a bit of fun, a bit different, um, and obviously you've got some nice tasty treats in there, um, they really enjoy them. There are five Woolies in Laval's group. Younger boys Enzo, Manny and Bueno Junior are all lower ranking. The only lady is Quapa. Quapa is quite a feisty, dominant female, so she takes no nonsense from the boys. Uh, Lavar's very laid back, chilled out, dominant male. Does like to have a good old play session with the boys when he's feeling jolly. Uh, other than that, he kind of just takes a step back and lets everybody else get on with it. Uh, and then you've got the three young boys, which is a really nice combination. They like to have a bit of fun, have a good play session together. So um, overall, it's a really lovely group that works really well. Views of Woolies. One crosses a narrow horizontal log, one moves over netting, one snacks on a pine cone. And they're all pretty switched on when it comes to treats. Feisty female Quapa starts hoarding hers. While Bueno Jr. takes his away from other prying fingers. And Enzo doesn't hang around to eat his. They've got such delicate little fingers um, that they're really good at manipulating things, you know, getting the tiny seeds and raisins out of the pine cones, small gaps, anything like that. They're, and they'll spend a bit of time trying to do it. If they really want something, um, then they will uh, put in the effort to get it out. Once the pine cones have been plundered, it's time to see what else is about. Enzo's keen on some greens. A stalk of tall grass. Levar has added juicy melon to his five a day. It's so good, Quapa's prepared to go to any efforts to reach it. Clinging to a rope, she stretches her neck to get at a piece of melon. Four-year-old Bueno Jr. is the most recent addition to the group. He was rejected as a baby by his mum, Sarah, following an emergency caesarean section. But now, he's thriving. Bueno Jr. was one of our hand-reared uh, woolly monkeys, but he really seems to have taken a shine to Lavar when he got put in the group. Kind of must see him as a bit of a role model. He kind of tries to copy him doing certain things uh, and follows him around a lot. And Lavar's very good, he's very patient with him, and he does enjoy having a play session with him as well. The pair indulge in some gentle play fighting pushing and pawing at each other on the climbing frame and on the ground. A view of the exterior of the hospital. It's been a sad afternoon at the hospital. Kim, the golden cheeked gibbon, has lost her baby following an emergency caesarean operation. I think we've lost him. But now the focus is on Kim. The team are waiting for her to wake up from her first ever anaesthetic. I miss Kim. They need to get her back into a crate and keep an eye on her as she comes around. She's gently maneuvered into the crate. It's vital she's closely monitored, so Vet Thesar checks her heart rate. He's keen she doesn't go back to sleep. Come on, come on. Gimme, gimme. Okay, okay. I know, I know. I know. Hey. You are already sleepy and you're already happy there. What I would like you to do is just keep bothering her. Yep. Yes. Okay. Don't let her go to sleep. Okay. I don't know if you guys want to take an extra big blanket with you or get one because then... The other issue is the cold. She needs to stay really warm as she comes round. So once she's back home, the team put a blanket on the floor under her crate. But within minutes, an unsteady Kim gets out of the crate. Gibbons live high in tops of trees for safety so her natural instinct is to try and go up. Shakily, she pulls herself up along a section of wire mesh. Tien isn't sure what to make of his wobbly partner. He watches as she woozily rolls round on the climbing frame. Normally, Tien would give Kim a hug, but she's behaving differently, and the smell of the hospital and people is probably confusing for him. He darts away from her. 
So he leaves Kim curled up in the corner to recover on her own. Sitting alone, Kim lowers her head against her knee. Next time on Monkey Life, Ruby, the park's newest marmoset, gets to meet the boys. But it doesn't all go according to plan. Hey, yeah, I'll give him a little squirt. And after a breakfast of fruit and jelly for the orangs, Roro's left with the washing up. A graphic reads, in memory 